So in this video we're going to talk about rates of change and computing an average rate of change. And we've been doing some work with rate of change when we were looking at the slope of a line because the slope of a line describes how the output quantity is changing with respect to the input quantity. Or, as you recall, the slope of a line M is given by the change in Y over the change in X or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. One of the f key features of lines is that this slope, this rate of change, is a constant amount. So it doesn't matter where we are on the line, if we compute the change in output with respect to the change of input, that will always be the same value. Certain applications can be modeled by lines. For example, your salary. If you're making $11 an hour, then that $11 per hour is your rate, your hourly rate. And that's a rate of change because that means that when you work an extra hour after your work, your pay is going to go up by $11. If the tuition is $95 per credit hour, then you know that increasing your academic load by an extra credit in a given semester will then increase your tuition by $95. So these are examples that can be modeled by lines. And the idea of being able to, to see what that change in the output will be if you have to add one more input, one more hour, or one more credit is an important idea. We want to have a similar concept but we want to be able to apply it to functions that are not straight lines. And that's where this notion of an average rate of change is going to come into play. And I want to show you with the first example, which is given by a table below. So take a look at this. It says that this table represents the annual sales in millions of dollars of a product. So notice that we've got the different years and we've got the sales amount and these represent millions of dollars and then it's asking for what was the average rate of change of annual sales between the year 2000 and 2001 so I want you to see what this looks like in a graph and so I went ahead and graphed it so this graph what I did is I took our order pairs and then took it into Excel and had it draw me a graph and then connected the points so that you could see the shape of the graph. And you can tell that these sales, as we go from the year 1998 to 2006, sales are not changing in a linear fashion, right? They're not changing on a constant slope. There's a bit of a curve to this uh, function, right? So we're being asked to find what the rate of change is in the sales in going from year 2000 to 2001. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the notion of slope and line in order to help us find how the sales are changing per year, in that year, okay? And how we're going to do that is we're going to draw a line between the two points, the two order pairs, and then we're going to compute the slope of that line. And when we compute the slope of the line, that's going to give us the average rate of change in that interval, okay? So it's going to look like this. So when I draw a line using those two order pairs in the year 2000-2001, I've got those two points right next to each other on my graph, right? So let's compute that slope using the slope formula. So we're going to use our two order pairs here, and that's 2000-215 and 2001-225. Okay, let me rewrite them here, 2000-215 and then 2001-225. And that's our x1, y1, and our x2, y2. And we'll compute the slope between those two points. So you know that that's the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. And that gives us 10 over 1. And so our average rate of change value is coming out to be 10. But what does it represent in the context of this word problem? Well, it, that tells us that the annual sales of this product is increasing by $10 million per year during this interval. Okay, I'm going to write that down. The average sales of the product is increasing by 
10 million dollars per year between 2000 and 2001. Okay, now they want us to find what was the average rate of change of annual sales between the year 2000 and 2003. So I went back to my graph and now I am going to take the order pairs at 2000, at the year 2000 and at the year 2003 and I drew a line through those two points, through those two order pairs. And notice that my line, which is in black here, doesn't, doesn't quite follow the blue line of the function. Do you see that? But that's why we're saying that this rate of change that we're computing is an average because what we're doing is we're finding the slope of this line between those two order pairs and by the way that's called the secant line. Notice that any two different order pairs will give me a different secant line. So that changes the rate of change, right? So you get a different average rate of change depending on which interval you are computing this slope, the slope of the secant line. So in this case, we're asked to find how are the sales changing on average when we're looking at the interval of years between the year 2000 and 2003. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope of the line that is made when we connect the order pairs for x equals 2000 and x equals 2003. So I hope you're getting an idea of what this average rate of change does. So let's go back and do that calculation now. So our two years are, from the table, year 2000, sales are 215 million, and year 2003, sales were 233 million dollars the, in the product. And now let's find the average rate of change by finding the slope using the slope formula here. So m equals, and again, x1, y1, x2, y2. 233 minus 215 over 2003 minus 2000, we get 18 over 3 or 6. So we know that between the years of 2000 and 2003, the sales of the products were increasing at an average rate of $6 million per year.